Welcome to the GCC Geology Path, where we have tons of specimens that represent the great geology of the Connecticut River Valley. Let's take a closer look. There are only three ways that rocks form, by igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic processes. We are very fortunate in the Connecticut River Valley to have excellent examples of all three rock types. And here, at the Greenfield Community College Geology Path, we have them on display for you to see, touch, and investigate further. On this uphill section, basalt lava rocks are found. Midway, there is one sedimentary rock with mud cracks. And across the path, some deep earth metamorphic rocks with igneous intrusions. Then, our famous and unique 200 million year old lithified armored mud balls, only seen here in the Connecticut River Valley. The final rock here looks like a giant egg. It's a metamorphic rock called quartzite. So, along the geopath, we have all three rock origins, the igneous, the metamorphic, and the sedimentary. And they record some really interesting geological history. Let's take a closer look. Quartzite is the world's hardest rock. Here's the story. Quartz is the world's hardest common mineral, and it's also chemically resistant. It makes great beach sand. If the quartz sand becomes sandstone, you can make it even harder by metamorphosing it. For example, when continents collide, the heat and pressure can create a metamorphic rock quartzite. This quartzite came from a glacial meltwater tunnel deposit in Sunderland. It shows crescentic fractures caused by the impacts of stream-tossed boulders. This rock has really been beat up, but it survived. Let's take a closer look at the armored mud balls. The GCC Geology Path has the world's best armored mud balls. Armored mud balls form as hard mud chunks fall into a stream. They tumble downstream and the mud becomes round and soft and sticky on the outside and pebbles from the stream bed stick into the outside and that's the armor. The armored mud balls have only been found in Turnus Falls, Greenfield, and Deerfield. They're about 200 million years old. And we know that date because in the middle of the Connecticut Valley rocks, there's a lava flow. It's called the Deerfield Basalt, and the Deerfield Basalt is 200 million years old. The armored mud balls are found in rocks that are just below and also closely above the lava flow so they are almost the same age. In the middle part of the rock path, there's a big white rock. This rock is not a metamorphic sandstone, but a metamorphic limestone called marble. Marble and quartzite can look very similar, but do a simple test. Check their hardness with a piece of glass. The marble will not scratch the glass. Next is the big Goshen schist rock intruded by granite. The schist was formerly ocean mud 400 million years ago. Tectonic plate collisions that made the Appalachian Mountains squeezed and recrystallized the mud. Garnets grew, mica grew, and the rock became a schist. Schist splits easily along the planar flakes of mica. And this gray rock is commonly used for stone walls and walkways. At the Goshen Stone Quarry, 
molten granite intruded into the schist, giving us two rocks in one. Granite which is igneous and the schist which is metamorphic. Here's our mud cracked rock. It preserves a history of climate change in the old Jurassic Rift Valley. The Jurassic Rift Valley was much like Death Valley. During wetter times there were lakes and during drier times the lakes shrank and dried. Insects left tracks and trails in the mud. The mud of the old lake bed became cracked. Streams wash sand over those cracks and today we see the scenic sedimentary structures of mud cracks that preserve these historic events. Lava rocks are the capstones at the top of the geology path. Just in case you were not excited by igneous intrusions, balls of rolling mud, or dried up lake beds, here we have something like you would find in Hawaii or perhaps Iceland. It's flowing basalt from 200 million years ago. Basalt lava flowed from great fissures that were formed as Pangaea split. Let's take a closer look. There were many earthquakes that cracked the rocks of the old rift. This smooth, polished, and scratched surface is a slick inside. You're looking at a false surface created by an earthquake. After the quake, white minerals coated the surface. This nearby specimen also reveals the effects of an earthquake. It has been fractured and then mineralized. The quake fractured rock is called a fault breccia. Now look for the pillow lava samples. These two oval rocks do not look like much. However, they are the ends of pillow lava tubes. Pillow lava is formed as lava flows underwater. This view from Mountain Road in Greenfield shows a good example of pillow lava. Sometimes the local lava flows flowed into Jurassic lakes, but most of the time the lava flowed on land. And when lava flows on land, it cools and shrinks and cracks in six-sided shapes. These give us spectacular columns as the basalt is eroded. We are very fortunate to have two basalt columns making the beginning of this geology path. What a journey we've had through geologic time.